In this video, I'm going to show you how to how I build a lithium ion battery pack. And it's going to be using these 18650 batteries. This particular type, which is the P28A by Molly Cell, holds 2800 milliamp hours of power and can deliver 25 amps of that continuously. Now these cells don't have any protection so if you drain them too far they will obviously be damaged but equally they, don't, they won't cut out and you in flight. If they get a little bit low you won't have any protection circuit cutting the power to your battery so it's important to make certain you have unprotected cells. The top looks like that because it's a vent. They're an aluminium can with a button top the whole of the can is the negative of the back of the cell and the button top is the positive so it's very very important there's some safety things you have to do with these cells before you get going the first thing is to inspect your cells for any damage in the plastic wrap that's important because obviously because we're putting this in series in a series this is going to be a 4S battery there can be potential difference between the outsides of the cells so if they touch you could end up with shorting so first thing you want to make certain that's protected and I'll just have a look at all four of my cells yep no cuts or anything in these cells if you do have a damaged cell you can easily buy these shrink wraps that are, this is actually cut for a 21700 but you can buy shrink wraps that you just put around and shrink wrap on to cover it so these four cells look good and to help space it I have 3d printed this little frame it's available on Thingiverse the broke the bottom section should be like that but it broke off it doesn't matter and what this is going to do is provide a small gap between all the cells when you put them together and that helps is safety in the cell it stops them rubbing against each other possibly causing damage to that covering by having that small space the next thing you, you should do uh, it's, it's less necessary in this one because we're just doing a 1s uh, 1p 4s so effectively we're doing that yeah, head to head to tail so if you were doing a 2s 2p you'd be soldering uh, you'd be connecting both these cells at both ends and if there was any mismatching voltage then that would run through your connection as you're connecting and if it was big it could cause danger but it's always best before you start doing this get over there, is to get a multimeter you should have a multimeter if you're doing anything like this you get a multimeter out and I'll just put it this way so you can see it and just check the voltages on each of your cells so this first cell 3.54 3.55 one hundredth more hundredth of a volt more that's fine you want them within 0.1 of a volt so 3.54 3.55 ish on the on the connection at 3.54 so they're all 3.54 3.55 so that's fine so they're all very very close to each other in voltage that means there's not going to be any potential differences that could cause issue if you were building a parallel pack so what I'm going to do is just arrange these front to back like that and then this is the front so I'll put the back there and vice versa this is where you think you need, you need more hands but if I do it vertically you'll see it better 
that allows us to start here and finish here go through the pack and help make it I'm just going to put a couple of other bands on put one in the middle first and I'll put one towards the top and roll that one down so that gives us our pack size as you can see from here there's just a small gap between each of the cells they're not actually touching there's a small gap and that's as I said that's a safety to stop damage now the reason I'm using this size and not the larger 21 700s is because the plane that's going in literally doesn't have the room for the 7, 21 700s it could go lengthwise and I dare say we're a bit hacky like I get the lid to go on but it's too much weight I would never be able to balance the plane but with the 18650s I get plenty of power and there's room to adjust the uh, centre of gravity forward and backwards so I've checked the weights and everything we're good to go on that so that's going to be powering this model here next thing to do is to clean and roughen the ends of these cells well at least to clean them and for that I'm going to use some isoprono alcohol and here's some 99% uh, pure isoprono alcohol easy to get on eBay plenty of places sell it and although it smells a bit it's pretty harmless stuff so I'm just going to get that on a little bit of, well in this case tissue paper and I'm just going to clean the ends up and the reason for that is I don't want any of my uh, f uh, oils from my fingers getting in the way of the connection so we're just going to wipe those ends that's themselves tidied up cover that up now I'm going to try not to touch the ends too much with my fingers now now I've got rid of all the oils let them dry off while I do the next stage to connect these I'm going to use a spot welder and the one I use is this one don't know if you can see it there clearly I'll zoom out a little bit and uh, it comes it's it's self-contained it's got its own lithium-ion battery now I believe it's 10,000 milliamp hour single pouch so there. and it comes with a charger cable and the spot welding connectors which are these and they're chunky because there's a lot of amperage that needs to go through to do a spot weld the next thing you need to do they connect into these big bits the next thing you need to do is put on safety glasses when you're using it so let me grab them safety glasses even though it's not particularly dangerous this it's possible a hot piece of metal could fly off it's very rare I've never seen it actually happen to me get some big sparks sometimes but I don't want to lose do any damage to my eye so let's not risk it what we're going to use to connect between these cells this is the sort of strip you can get it's nickel not steel nickel plated steel this is actually 100% nickel this is a piece I had from an, uh, another spot welder that was given. It's very good, but it's very thin. So I've actually managed to buy some more. And you can tell it's not steel, because if you bend it, it just stays bent. It doesn't spring back at all. So you know that is 100% nickel just from that. And the reason we choose nickel is it spot welds really nice. It's got quite for first for a conductive metal it's got quite a low melting point but it's also very conductive 
So we're going to be using that to connect it. And the first thing we need to do, remember what I said about the outside of the cells being these steel cans. I think, yeah, they are steel. Are all negative. We want to protect the edge here. If that gets nicked, you're potentially going to short the cell across. So you buy these things. Uh, let me show you here. For, work, for one reason or another, I don't know why, these are called fish paper. And you can get them pre-cut to fit over the top of cells. I uh, well recommend that you, you use these connectors. It just means that the steel strip's going across, there's no chance of the steel strip touching the negative of the same cell and causing a short. So we'll just do the other side as well. And it's a really good rule. So this is all about don't be not being on fire fitting these. They're very cheap to get you can get I got this reel of many, many top ends, so I think they're about three or four pounds for two sheets. They don't have to stick on really tightly, but but the job is a, as an insulator. Pick a top. This is going to be the positive for the battery, and this is going to be the final negative for the battery. So these are where the lead that I've temporarily lost, the battery lead will go. So this will come off this. It is not recommended you solder to any of these uh, it's not recommended that you solder to batteries people do it I've done it it does work but it's not recommended what I like to do is have a tag that I can solder to so where's my cutters there we are so I'm going to leave these two off for the moment so if we start, let's go positive to negative. So this is the positive. So we then need to do the serial. We need to go down to the negative and then across, because that is the negative at the battery. So positive, we're not going to use this one. We're going to come down to here to negative and we're going to go across to this positive. So we're going negative to positives here, positive to negative to positive so we need to connect from here to here so we'll cut a piece of this nickel approximately the right length it's quite difficult to cut We're even with a decent pair of side cutters get the length that's a good length and then what I tend to do is just nick off the corners so it doesn't catch So I just nick off the very sharp corners. I'll show you that when I'm done. Right, so that's the uh, connection. Time to put on my uh, protective glasses. Mm -hmm. And we'll time to put on my protective glasses and we'll just that will be the first connection across there to there. Now I found with spot welding that if you press really really hard you're gonna make it what we're doing is making a positive and negative connection between the points through the nickel and through the battery cell. It makes a very hot quick connection but doesn't put a lot of actual volume of heat into the cell and that's why it's recommended to, to spot weld but if you press really hard you're making too good a connection the electricity actually flows too well and you don't end up with a really brilliant spot welding now this spot welder has a setting that it's looking for 
it's looking for a connection so nothing at the moment it's turned off so I'll turn it on it's got a set of LEDs here and you can go up on power see the power and I found that basically for spot welding batteries you just want to be on maximum and this is the battery state internally and you want that fully charged as well because it what this is going to do is when it sees a connection between these two bits it's going to basically short the lithium battery in the unit through the connectors so put one down always work with two hands if you're doing this and keep them on either side of the battery you don't ever want these touching each other so you put one side down pressing moderately hard and then you press the other it's going to be a crack now it just beeps you can hear that sometimes you'll get a little bit of spark and I I like to put lots on the thing is not to press too hard just a gentle pressure each time it connects it makes a little spot Okay, so I'll put that aside and what I'm going to do is just check that that's uh, yep that's pretty well connected so the next one onto here one side down it's harder because you're only hitting on the little spell at the point on the end sometimes hear it click and that should be connected which it is so that's our first connection done if you've done it right that's pretty solid on you can pull them off and if you pull them off you end up with like little little scratchy marks that you'd have to sand off before reusing the cells so what we've got there will be positive to negative to positive so if we need now need to go across here so I'm going to carry on and do this there's two more connections to do I'll speed this up because you've seen it happen right let's turn uh, now I'm not quite ready to turn that off so getting out the multimeter again Alexa what's 3.55 times 4 3.55 times 4 is 14.2 so we're looking for 14.2 volts across these two connectors let's make certain you can see it let's see if we get 14.2 volts let's get that out of the way oh 14.18 close enough within our levels so we know this is this battery is connected up correctly now to connect this connector to the top here I'm actually going to connect it this way across like this and I'm going to do a couple of tabs short slightly shorter tabs 
this is the this is the end of the spot welding so we're nearly through this the scary bit the dodgy spot welder I must say I like this a lot better than the first one I bought from eBay which was basically a bare board that you had to lay down a load of solder on to make it efficient and I actually ended up wrapping it in captain tape just because I, I didn't like the idea of all the amperage flying around it on a bare board it worked but it it scared the hell out of me and that required you to connect two chunky uh, it wanted a, a three cell lithium battery it's saying 12 volts so a three cell lipo battery and you'd want a 5000 three cell lipo battery across it to provide the chunk this is all in one unit and it works really well so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a couple of tabs like this on each cell and then I'm going to solder that and then fold it over after putting some more insulation in we'll do that in a moment but that's what I'm going to be soldering the power leads to so this is actually the hardest of the lot because you don't want it falling down like that there we go let's get one down to hold it in place you can adjust it Literally, it's looking for a continuity to, and then it puts out the pulse that you set. This is zero, zero point one five millimeter nickel sheet. So that's connected. You can see, look, it's quite well connected. I can't pull it off easily. And then we'll just do the same here. And those will be our connection tabs and that's the cell as su the battery as such made but there's no safe way of charging it this way So before we fit the final leads, we need to fit a balance lead. Exactly the same as you get a battery from a shop. You can buy the balance leads. You just have to look around a bit. They're quite they're moderately difficult to find. So that's that's our battery made. That is now a functional 4S 1P battery. Let me turn that off because that scares me or well, here this is a a balance lead <coughs> it's way longer than I need but it's a balance lead and for a 4S battery you need a 5 wire battery lead a uh, balance lead you have the positive end the negative end then you have to join between cell 1 and 2 join between cell two and three and the join between cell three and four that's why you have five leads so this will have the total battery lead and uh, battery voltage and between either pair of leads you'll have a single cell and that's how it does the balancing it measures it can measure the single cell so we need to work out how to connect these up so obviously if this is the positive which it is we want to decide that that's going to be connected to that and what I tend to do is why why the positive and negative last at the same time as wiring on this so that would be the positive then the next one after that the next connection is that one so we need that one that blue one to go down to there 
and you, the nice thing about this little 3D print is you can put that through. So that would be a, that's a nice length for a balance lid. We'll leave it about there. So we need to solder that on. So let me fire up the soldering iron. Soldering to this, I will not be soldering to the end of the cell. I'll be soldering to the bridge in between. Out with the solder. Lead free solder, uh, not lead free, leaded solder. Bought from RS Components. You can get a lot of solder for not too much money. Okay. Let's uh, tin this up. I always strip too much and then cut it back. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of solder, a little solder blob on the connection in between, not onto the cell itself. The nickel wicks the heat really easily. So connect soldering onto it is, is a doddle. So just trim that off a teeny bit. Do it this way because I'm right handed. In fact, so I don't burn my fingers. Again, metal around batteries, be careful. It would be all too easy to short on this and it wouldn't be pretty. So, it's just a quick touch. Balance leads never take much amperage, so they can be lightweight as you want. So that's the first lead done. So this is first. That goes to the second connection. So the third connection is that one there. So we'll put a little blob of solder on there. We need to just uh, get the length of that right, about there. Again, these are not connected at this end, so there's no danger of them touching. And that leads us, leads us, no pun intended, to making the final connections up here. So you want to try and keep your batteries as neat as possible. So that's that's a good shape for the lead. So this is going to go here, and this is going to go here. But before I do that, I, I need to connect on the power leads. These are a little bit too long, these power leads. I don't want them quite that long. Try to keep the weight down to reduce the amount of uh, wire in the pack. So, so far we've got a battery that's built. We've got the balance leads nearly all on. But what we haven't got is any sort of protection against shorts. And we'll get onto that after I get these leads on. certain you've got the positive to positive <laughs> and make certain you've got your XT60 lead connector on right yeah positive positive good good I'm doing it all right which is good so we'll get that hot good now this is connected it's not connected to the other end of the cell so we're okay still Always think about 
continuity whether you're going to cause a short never call shorts on batteries right final thing to do is I'm going to connect this onto here but not quite yet I'm going to fold these over to allow the leads to come out this way but obviously negative that is a different potential voltage here so I've got to be I've got to protect it okay here yeah. got some thinnish card here So, piece of cardboard I've cut, you can see it there, put a slot there so I can fit these cables in between, a little bit longer on the slot, maybe. basically you, you do what you, you feel is necessary to really prevent, the, reduce the risk of shorts, that's not too bad on that, it's a little bit too long. You can be as artistic as you like, but there we go, that helps protect. So now I've got that protection here, I need to hit, cut the, uh, the positive and negative ends of the balance leave and attach them. We're getting there, we've nearly got a finished battery that we can check. I think it pays dividends if you just do it one stage at a time. Don't try and mat don't try and bulk these up because then you're gonna make a mistake and end up shorting something. So this is gonna go to this one. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the soldering iron itself. Cool. And then we cut this one. Once we've soldered this on, it's all about the packaging then. We've already added the first bit of insulation and we just need to uh, carry on with that to make it as safe a product as you can, as you can make. Okay, turn the soldering iron off. And that is a battery 4S 
1P lithium ion battery pack built. It's not ready to go in the plane yet, but that's it built. And what we can do, we can check the voltage here. That's what I tend to do first. Just check it is the voltage that I expect, and it's the right way around. So positive in the positive hole. Negative, well, this doesn't do negative very well, but I'll connect to there. We're good. So overall it's fine. And then we can put the battery cell checker on here, and it should say 4S 14.6. And we can go through the battery cells. They're not perfectly in balance, but they're very close. Remember we checked them before we even started. So, that's good. Now how do we go about putting this into a safe battery, finished battery? It's all about the packaging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be folding these over. So what you need after that to package this is this stuff. This is Captain Tape. It's a, a sticky backed insulation tape that's very, very uh, insensitive to heat or chemicals. It was developed, uh, well, it wasn't developed for the space age, but basically it's because it doesn't uh, age or affected by heat or temperature very much. It was, it's been used in space vehicles a lot. It's always this weird, sort of yellow colour and it's good for wrapping batteries because it's a very good insulator we're still held together by rubber bands here so what I need to do is just roll this down it's very fine, so very thin it's, it's worse than even all those sellotape for losing the end of and we want to just wrap this battery with some captain tape to hold it together. It doesn't need to be very much at the moment because we're going to shrink wrap this as well. So I can roll that battery down, those rubber bands down, and do a piece around the middle. Now what I'll do is I'll do a big one around the middle at the end. So I'll roll this down, do another piece at this end. Weird stuff this is. It adds almost no weight Captain Tape, it's really good. So now, we, now we've got it wrapped to both ends, we can take the rubber bands off all together. And then with the wide Captain Tape I'm going to stick one more piece around the middle. Be generous. It, it's very lightweight stuff, Captain Tape. You can be pretty generous with putting it on. So that's held together. Next bit is I'm going to run some Captain Tape across here to hold this cardboard down and it adds more insulation. Now I find that's a bit too wide, so I'll have to use the thinner. It's not cheap stuff, though, Captain Tape. K-A-P-T-O-N If you're wondering how to spell
Okay. And now I've got cardboard here and captain tape. I can bend these over. Hopefully. And if the solder doesn't give way, it shouldn't do. I end up with quite a nice neat battery shape. And again, sharp edges. Don't want them. So I'm going to cut another piece of card just to cut, cover them up. We'll captain tape that down as well. You're adding weight, but it's think about it as adding safety rather than weight. You're adding safety to this. One more piece there. I'll have to order some more, I'm running out. Okay. Never mind, don't know how long that was. That's why we have two cabins. That's why we have two cabins. So, protected, protected by the card, got a balance, power and balance, and another piece of card on this end, help protect this. You don't have to use kids pink handled scissors but it, I find it helps right does have quite a high one more piece and that is your battery primarily complete it's still not pretty though it is pretty well insulated now, just like the rings at the top, you can get sticky back fish tape in the right length. I think I've got enough here just to wrap around here. And again, this adds protection to the cell. So yeah, I'm going to put that on. Right, so this is sticky back to like the rings. So I can put this on. We're not quite finished even then. Would help if I stuck it on straight though. There we go. We have the makings of a professional looking battery now. Not quite there. Because there's one more thing we can do. And I have this shrink wrap, which is, I don't know if it's going to be the right size. I may have to get some other shrink wrap first. But this is a big tube in a shrink wrap you can put around batteries. Let's see if it will fit. Hopefully it will. Oh, look at that. That's lovely. So I'm going to cut that fairly long. That's going to go around the whole thing.
this shrink wrap is really sort of finishing wrap that you get around batteries but it's not very uh, you can't overheat it easily uh, if you overheat it it will, it will rip so what you want to do is tuck it in like that and use don't use fire don't use a hot air gun uh, use a, a paint stripper gun a hot air gun to shrink this down I'm going to do that now, I'm not going to do it at the bench here because it's, well, noisy and you've all seen a hot air gun I'll come back the nice thing about this stuff is once it's shrunk it's quite hard so what, the reason I, I leave it longer is then I end up folding the ends over it might actually be a little bit too long and you can seal the ends up fairly well just by squashing it onto something while it's hot I'm going to go, go away and do that. And here is the final result, the final battery made up. You can see that sealed up at that end against the caption tape. This end, well, it could it's not quite perfect there. I would prefer that to be underneath. I'll probably finagle that in. But it doesn't. Yeah, that's that sorted. So we've got lots of tape. You can always put another wrapper wrapper on if you don't if you want to. But this is pretty good. This is good enough for me. A four cell, four four S battery with two thousand eight hundred milliamp hours, and this is the Funfly. 4S battery that I have been flying, that I have flown it on and you can see pretty much this is a 1500 this is 2800 size wise there's not a lot of difference it's fractionally bigger but overall very very similar let's weigh them on the uh, rather rather knackered bathroom scale so I'll put the number towards you there we are is it on zero let's do it again so this is the 1500 I'll call it 180 grams and this is the 2800 oh, 200 grams almost spot on and this is 180 grams 200 180 so we're talking 20 grams more for all that extra power capacity yeah sure the uh, this cell is capable allegedly it says it's 100 100 C so this would be allegedly capable of giving uh, 155 amps. I don't believe it, but say it's 25C. That would be what, uh, 15 to 30. So 60 amps easy, maybe 100. And this limited to 30 amps, uh, 25 amps. But for the use in the heat wing, it's the perfect size. The last thing is just to get yourself a sharpie and write on it. Let it remind you what it is. So this is a two eight zero zero milliamp hour lie ion. And then I, I tend to write on it max 25A amps. Just so I know what I've got here. And that, dear viewers, is how you make a lithium ion battery pack.